Okay, today we're going to be making a pork curry with a kick. Again, this is from the Hairy Bikers Curry Book. Um, I've not made this curry before, but I think it's going to be similar to the lamb vindaloo. So it's going to be hot, but not too hot. A, 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 a spicy hot curry should have flavour. It's not just about heat. We could overload it with cayenne pepper and chilies and make it unedible, but you get no. There's no stripes going to go on your shoulders for for eating a, a curry that blows your head off. It should be hot. Maybe make your nose run a little bit, but it's got to have flavour, and this will be packed full of flavour. So the most important thing is you're going to need some uh, some pork, and uh, this is pork shoulder, 1.2 kilograms, and that's been cut into fairly large cubes, probably about an inch an inch square cubes. Uh, and then also for that you're going to need some uh, vegetable oil. I don't use vegetable oil. I I don't don't have it in my diet, so I use olive oil, which is fine. You need some salt. And some brown sugar and then for the for the curry sauce you need four hot chilies so these are long green chilies you need three medium sized onions six cloves of garlic and a 25 grams chunk of ginger chopped roughly and then your dry ingredients are some bird's eye chilies some uh, ground turmeric some uh, red wine vinegar and then here we've got cumin seeds coriander seeds fenugreek seeds some cinnamon, cloves and peppercorns. So all of those seeds are going to need grinding. So you can use a spice grinder like I have here. This is actually a coffee grinder but it's just the same. Or you can use a pestle and mortar. If you don't have either of those you can use pre-ground ingredients. But you, 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 you definitely want to grind those up somehow. Uh, so, so if you've not got either of those, you're going to either need to get one of, one of the, the, the pieces of equipment or you're going to need to get the, the pre-ground ingredients. And then we need a frying pan for frying up uh, the onions and the, the garlic and the chilies. And then you need a large oven ready pot that uh, is going to be cook most of the, the curry in. So that this is a uh, it's a pan that goes on the stove top or it can go in the oven. There's no there's no plastic on this. It's all, all steel and glass. So they're, they're the things. Other than that, apart from things like uh, obviously a good sharp knife, you're going to need some measuring jugs because you've got to be able to measure some water and some of your uh, red wine vinegar. Okay. So that's everything you need. I'll put the, the, the list of ingredients up on the screen so you can you can uh, freeze it. Uh, I'll also I'll see if I can find a link to the uh, Hairy Bikers uh, webpage. I don't know if this is on their webpage. As I say, I've not made it before, so this is the first time for me. So let's get started. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do, we're going we're gonna to get the onions prepared. So what it asks for is two of the onions to be quartered and one of the onions to be sliced. Uh, I didn't mention that we're going to need a food processor or some something similar to that. So you could use a blender. If you don't have a food processor or a blender, the other way to do it would be to chop everything really, really finely. So you're going to have to chop the onions uh, extremely fine and the garlic and the... the, the uh, and, and the other the, the chilies. Because the idea behind this is it makes we're going to make a smooth sauce. Two of the onions quartered and the other onion sliced. So the quartered onions go into the food processor. Okay. So what we're going to do now we're going to prepare the chilies. So if you if you're not a, if you a little bit unsure how hot you want this, you probably want to deseed the chilies first. I'm actually going to go all in on this, and I'm going to put two of the chilies into the food processor with the seeds still in. So just roughly chop these. We're going to deseed. So. As I say, if you don't have a food processor, you would chop these very, very finely. So once all the chilies are in, wash your hands. Next thing we're going to need is six cloves of garlic.
Okay, so once we've chopped our garlic, goes in the food processor or the blender for the rest of the ingredients. Calling for a 25, uh, tw 25 gram piece or, or one ounce piece of ginger. So we'll do the best we can. Sometimes you can get ginger that's nice and chunky and easy to work with, other times it looks more like a root like this, so we'll we'll get the best we can. In with the ginger. One teaspoon of ground turmeric. And then we add 75 millilitres of red wine vinegar. So once we've got all those ingredients into our food processor, we can make that into a smooth paste. Hey, so I I blended that for around about um, two minutes, and it's uh, it's it's smooth. It's not it's not a perfect paste. It's still got a bit, bit of chunk in there, but it's going to go in the oven for two hours. So all, any any large lumps are going to are going to work their way down. The, uh, the 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 aroma coming off that already is quite strong. Um, the the, the chilies and the garlic and the onions are giving. Uh, Giving quite a nice smell, so I uh, I'm optimistic this is going to be a great curry right from the right from the off. So just over a medium heat, we're going to toast our um, our spices. We've got two teaspoons of cumin seeds, one teaspoon of coriander seeds, one teaspoon of fenugreek seeds, a three to four centimeter, which is about an inch and a half of cinnamon stick, five cloves, and a half a teaspoon of black peppercorns and we're just going to toast these for around about a minute, minute and a half, two minutes till they, just so they, they, they get warmed up and start to um, release their flavour. We don't want to burn them that's for sure. If you're not going to grind them and you're going to use pre-ground spices you don't have to do this step so we can just skip over to the next one. So I'll put the toasted spices into the into the coffee grinder. I'm just going to give it a blast for a all our spices go. Okay, so now we've done our marinade, which is all our onions and garlics and chilies and things and spices mixed together. And we've got our pork in a large non-metallic bowl, cut into roughly one inch cubes. And we're going to add the marinade to the pork and then we're going to leave that to stand for a couple of hours. So that's the majority of the work done. So we're just going to leave that to stand. We're going to cover it and leave it at uh, room temperature for a couple of hours to let all the uh, the flavours permeate the meat. And also the vinegar in there will actually tenderise the pork as well. So by the time this has been in the oven for a couple of hours we should have a really juicy succulent pieces of pork. Okay so once we've left that for a couple of hours to uh, to get all the all the flavours in and marinade nicely. The next thing we need to do is to, to fry it up and then we can get it into the oven. So the first thing to do is to set your oven to gas mark 4 if you're using gas marks or 180 degrees Celsius if you're using Celsius or 350 Fahrenheit.
Next thing we need to is fry the onions. We, if you remember, we chopped some onions that we put into the blender, and the rest, the other onion, we sliced. So we need to uh, to get that fried up. Okay, so these onions have just had three or four minutes, but you can see they're. Uh, the, the, the softened and they're getting that nice golden colour. Any any further, they're going to start turning dark brown, and that's not what we want. So that's the oven up to temperature. Another tablespoon of the oil, and then in batches, we're going to fry the pork. Now, I'm not using a non-stick pan. I prefer to use a a cast iron pan. So we are going to get some, some sticking to the bottom, don't worry about that, we're going to deglaze it with some water at the end and it will all add extra flavour. Okay so once you've done your, your pork in, in batches, this is the final batch just about to go in. If you're looking to get a little bit of colour on there and just start the meat cooking, but most of the cooking is going to be done in the oven so you don't need to, uh, to worry about it too much if there's still a little bit of pink showing here and there. But that's looking good, it's got some nice colour on. And then we take some of our pre-measured water, so this is 750ml, which is around about 3 cups. Uh, and then you take some of it, about 250ml or maybe 1 cup, and just add it to your pan. Increase the heat. I'm going to deglaze it, get all that uh, wonderful flavour off the bottom of the pan. And while we're doing that, we can add our salt. So we add a, a heat teaspoon. The last thing to go in are two tablespoons of light brown sugar. Next thing we need to do is put the whole pan onto the heat just to get that up to boiling temperature before we add it to the oven. We're just about at boiling, so this is ready to go into the into the oven. I'm probably going to give this because the chunks are quite big, the pork's quite big. I'm probably going to give this two hours in the oven. Uh, I will check it probably after an hour just to make sure we've not lost too much water. I don't want it to come dry, but I don't want it as watery as this. I'm hoping it's going to thicken up a little bit in the oven. So I will check it after an hour. Okay, so this has been in the oven just under two hours, about one hour fifty. And it's starting to look pretty good. So there is quite a little bit of fat that's that's come to the top. I'll let that settle, and um, and then I'll, I'll I'll just strain that off. But that pork's looking tender now. I have had a taste. It is quite fiery. So if you're uh, if you're not too keen about being too too hot, I would probably deseed all of the chilies. Uh, or even maybe miss two of them out. It is quite fiery. I might just calm it down a little bit with um, with some some yogurt. Uh, okay, so I've drained the fat off it, and it's looking really good, and it's tasting fantastic. What I would say for my taste, it's just a little bit too uh, fiery. Um, as I said earlier, I think I should have deseeded all of the chilies uh, but I didn't so what the recipe actually says now is to is to heat this up and reduce the sauce down well mine's already thickened quite nicely I'm not going to reduce that down anymore but it says to add two tablespoons of the red wine vinegar to it I'm not going to do that 
to reduce the heat I'm going to actually add probably five or six tablespoons of double cream to it um, but I'm not going to do that until I'm ready to um, until I'm ready to eat it. So if your sauce doesn't look as thick as this you, you just want to simmer it uh, with a lid off for well for however long it takes just to to get the sauce to thicken but, but I, I'm happy with that that's nice and thick for me but as I say it's just a little bit too fiery so I'm going to cool it down with some some cream. If yours is not so hot go ahead and put the uh, two tablespoons of red wine vinegar in there. So we're serving this curry with some rice, naan bread and a pint of real ale.